Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. Please visit our website, cscatlanta.org, for a complete list of live and recorded events. We invite you to sign up for our newsletter to stay connected to all future programs. Um, if you, let's say you end up making the pasta recipe that we're going to do today. If you end up making that every Monday, <laughs> you could create a favorite here, which is just a direct way to get to the exact settings of your favorite meal. Um, so those, that's just the basics. Today we're going to use the saute function, and then we're going to use the pressure cook function. So super handy. I have actually loved having this pot. Before buying this Instant Pot, I, just, I actually just got one like two months ago for the first time. I finally decided to buy one after years of saying, oh, I don't need that um, because I did have a pressure cooker and I've been using a, just a stovetop old school pressure cooker. I've been using that for years. Um, and then my mom also uses a pressure cooker. She said, she told me that hers broke. So I was like, oh, maybe, you know, I'll just give her mine. And then this is my opportunity to buy the Instant Pot, which does the pressure cooking along with all the other things. And the nice thing that I've noticed about this is that I can set it, because it's electric and it plugs in, you can set it and then do something else, <laughs> which you cannot do with the pressure cooker on the stovetop. Pressure cooker on the stovetop, you know, it's, there's fire involved, there's a stove involved, somebody has to be there to man manually turn it off when it's finished. But with this, if you're outside and this thing goes off, it just turns off by itself. Or if you're out of the house, if you're taking a shower, it's going to automatically turn off um, after it's set. So that's super, super nice. Um, and another reason why, you know, the slow cook function is another option as well, which I didn't have with the pressure cooker. So a kind of nice thing to have around. Um, so if you're wondering which one to buy, because if you go on Amazon, and you put an Instant Pot, I'm sure Emily knows because she had to do this for when she ordered this for the class. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of different versions of it. So what I did was I actually went straight to the Instant Pot website and there they gave, you can have like, there's like a comparison chart. I think there's like a, four main types that have different various price points and various, you know, all the different functions. Um, so you can kind of compare there. Um, depending upon what, you know, what you want to use it for. If you're going to do slow cooking, I, I recommend the Pro. At least through my research, I, I learned that the Pro for slow cooking is, is the better one to get. If you're not going to do slow cooking, then you may be able to get away with one of the cheaper versions of it. Okay, so today we're going to make pasta in this. So the nice thing, pasta is not a hard meal to make, but when you make it the traditional way on the stovetop, you know, there's a pot for boiling water, um, which takes some time even just to bring up a bunch of water to boil. And then you have a pan to saute the sauce. So it's just in terms of the cleanup, um, there's a little bit more cleanup involved. And this pot is going to actually, you know, you're going to be able to cook the pasta and the sauce all in here. So cleanup is going to be a lot easier and it actually cuts down the time as well. But we're going to approach it in the same way that we would approach making a regular like meat sauce plus um, pasta. So starting with our onion. Oh, I will say, let me back up before I do the onion. Um, this lid functions like a regular pressure cooker and then it has this little um, piece that pops up, this red piece that pops up when it comes to pressure. Um, and then it also has a release a way to release the steam quickly. Similar to a pressure cooker, it has one of these, um, one of these rings that needs to go in here. So don't forget to put this in, because I've done that where I, I forgot to actually put this ring in and, and then it never, it doesn't seal properly and it never comes to pressure. And then you have like steam coming out the edges. It wasn't like, it wasn't a, uh, my meal still came out fine. I just had to stop the pressure cooker and put this in and then start it back up, which is totally fine, but it just adds a little bit more time if you have to stop and then, and then the, it also comes with two of these seals. So one is for like sweet things, desserts, and then one is for savory things that have like lots of spices and, and can carry some flavor. I guess the, I guess the idea is that the seal can carry some flavor 
So you don't want to like transfer a garlic taste into your pudding or something or your yogurt. <laughs> okay, so I've got the steel in now. I'm going to prep, I'm going to prep our onion. So we're making a, um, this recipe, you can think of this recipe almost like a formula. You do not have to follow this exactly. Um, some general, general things uh, will keep, will, will allow you to make some substitutions. Um, so onion going in, but, and we're adding ground turkey. But if you don't have ground turkey or not a fan of ground tur turkey, you can substitute for other, you know, you could do like ground beef or ground chicken. You could leave the meat out completely and you could just beef up the vegetables, add up some, add some mushrooms or some zucchini or um, whatever vegetable you, you liked in place of the meat. Okay, so onions, that's only one substitution. I'm gonna go through some others too. The idea is that this is sort of like a framework for a pasta, any pasta that you can make in the pot. So I'm dicing the onion. This is just a yellow onion. If you don't wanna add onion, you don't have to. I mean, and also our, our recipe is, doesn't have garlic, but if you wanna add garlic in there, I would, I would totally do that. And actually in retrospect, I wish I had a piece of garlic here, a clove, a clove or two. But our, the sauce that I chose today is a roasted garlic sauce. So we'll probably get plenty of flavor from that. Oh, and I'm actually also adding garlic powder too. So the spices in this recipe can be changed. So today's Mardi Gras. I don't know if anybody remembered, but <laughs> today's March 1st, uh, officially the start of Mardi Gras. And so if you wanted to go Cajun on this pasta and add like a Cajun spice blend, make it really spicy, um, that could definitely, I could see that working out really, really well. And I actually almost did that today um, just to, and I should have worn my, I don't own any, but I should have gotten some Mardi Gras, Gras beads to, to wear. <laughs> Is anyone from New Orleans? You can say, tell us in the chat box if you're from New Orleans or from Louisiana. Okay, so that was a whole onion. It's kind of a lot, but I, I think it's gonna be totally fine. And that's really all the chopping I need to do for this. So for a weeknight meal, not bad. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn on the pot. Um, I'm gonna do the, the saute function first. So, and then I'm just gonna saute on this particular pot. Some of them you can't choose the um, temperature, but for the saute, but for this, I'm doing like a medium temperature. Don't let all the beeping and all of that scare you. It's really quite easy. Start, okay. So once I put start, it's telling me it's on. It's preheating, you know, slightly. So at this point, I'm gonna add my oil, just like if you were sauteing on the stovetop. It's just preheating. Gonna add a little bit of oil. This is olive oil. And then I've got my spatula, just to move that oil around the pan a little bit. I'm gonna let it warm up here first before I add any. I always recommend getting this oil hot before, whether you're sauteing on the stovetop or in this pot, get the oil warm or hot first before you add anything. Um, so like I said, we're adding, we're gonna be using ground turkey in this. It's a leaner choice than beef, lower fats, still great flavor. Um, we're going to be adding the spices that we have here are lemon pepper, oregano, garlic powder, and paprika. Um, but like I said, you can switch these spices up. So you could just use like a traditional Italian blend. If you already have that, you could go for your Cajun seasoning blend. Um, and also on spices, while we're talking about those for a second, I want to mention what I've noticed is in terms of prices for spices. Prices for spices. Um, <laughs> they are much less expensive if you can buy them in a, in a bag like this. I've noticed it's like half the cost to buy the, almost in bulk, because this is like 0.7, no, this is two ounces. And this is, well, it's actually the same amount, <laughs> believe it or not. 
it's the same similar amount. I think on this, you're, you're paying a little bit for the packaging. You know, this is a much less expensive packaging, the plastic than this glass jar. So, I mean, even keep your jars. If you use the same spices over and over again, keep your, you know, garlic powder jar and then just refill it with when you, when you go to refill it, refill it with the, with the plastic bag that can save you a ton of money. Ashley Diane yeah. said that she made jambalaya for today. She's from Louisiana and pasta -laya is, is popular. It actually uses pasta instead of rice. If you yes. Okay, cool. I love it. I was just doing a little bit of research. Um, I was going to do like a Louisiana style dish in this instant pot. And I know there's a ton of recipes. You could absolutely make jambalaya, jambalaya um, in this. You could do gumbo in this. Um, I didn't, I was under the gun to get this thirst recipe ready. So I, I, I didn't have time to test anything new and I've done this pasta a bunch, but um, maybe we can do in the future some, if you guys like the style of class, and you want to do instant pot more, maybe we can do some um, versions of jambalaya or gumbo or something like that in this pot. It's good. This pot is great for making soups, um, even doing rice style dishes. It works out really, really well. So you can hear the onion. Maybe you can hear this onion. It's starting to sizzle. And that's the sound you want to hear when it hits the pan. Okay. So we're going to let that go for just a minute or so. Um, and then we're going to add the, the ground turkey. So the pasta that I picked today is a brown rice pasta. If you're trying to do gluten-free pastas, this particular brand I have found is really, really nice uh, across the board. Whatever they make is good, jovial. Um, I've used their lasagna noodles. I've used different pastas that they make. I've even used their um, gluten-free pancake mix. <laughs> it is all delicious. Um, and so the, I like the ingredients too, because, um, with it being brown rice there, there is still fiber included, um, which is missing sometimes from gluten-free pastas and, um, just different blends also. So the ingredients on this are just brown rice and flour and you, and you are still getting some of that fiber in there that you would find in like a whole wheat pasta. So just a really nice, and even if you're not gluten-free, um, but you want to kind of get away from the white pasta, I feel like this is a good, my kids love this. It, it's like a good um, flavor and it's a little less dry than like a whole wheat pasta. Ashley, Dinita says that she bought spices um, both at an Indian-owned restaurant near me and also a Chinese Um store I guess grocery store uh -huh. is much cheaper yes yes um yes if you're going to go in bulk okay so yes if you especially if you cook a lot um just be careful though because they you know how you know how it goes they get it you you buy the spices and it happens to me too it happens to everybody you buy the spices and they sit in your cabinet forever so just make sure and they're you know if they don't have a smell anymore then they don't have any flavor. So just keep that in mind. Um, double check the dates, double check the smell, make sure it's still fresh. Um, but even if, even if, you know, even if you have to toss it after it's been in your cabinet for a year or two, I, I, I'm going to bet that you're probably still saving money <laughs> by buying in bulk. Okay. I've also noticed another um, spot that sells, that has good prices on spices is um, the Cab Farmer's Market. And they come in like those little plastic containers. So that was our turkey, ground turkey that just went in. I'm just gonna get rid of this turkey container real quick. Um, and then we're gonna, at this point, we're going to let that brown in there a little bit before I start stirring it. It's gonna be a lot easier to break up if it browns a little bit first. And then I'm going to add the spices now too. So a little bit of salt. Your recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna use like a little less than that. I think we can get away with, with a little less. Um, 
And then we have our garlic powder, about a half a teaspoon. Remember, give it the smell test, make sure it's fresh. Half a teaspoon. And then we have our paprika. Going in. Um, you could also substitute smoked paprika if you wanna have, if you, especially if you're doing like a, um, like a Cajun. I feel like a smoked paprika would be really nice. Um, okay, then we have, Where's our dried oregano, which is a you know a common Italian spice. But don't feel like you have to use all of these either. If you only have, if you, you know, if you don't have any paprika, don't worry about it. Um, if you don't have any lemon pepper, don't buy it just for this recipe. Um, just use what you have. So that's about a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon pepper. Um, and then I'm gonna start to break up that meat here. So you're gonna notice it starting to brown a little bit. You're gonna mix in all those spices. Does everybody on the on our call today, does everybody have an Instant Pot? Uh, let us know if you do not have one. I'd be interested to see, or let us know if you do. Well, I'd be interested to see like um, what your level of comfort is with the Instant Pot too. If you're, I mean, because it does have a lot of buttons. <laughs> um, and it, it is like learning almost like a new cooking technique. So it can take some time in the beginning just to get used to it. But um, I do feel like if, you know, if you can take the time in the beginning just to, to practice, it will ultimately save you time. So far, okay. everybody is saying, no, they don't have an Instapot. So okay. Maybe they're interesting. trying okay. to see what all it entails. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so this is your, this is your intro. So right now, I mean, it's just, it's just like you're sauteing on the stovetop. No, no, you know, only, you only had to push the buttons in the beginning just to get it started in the saute mode. Um, but I haven't adjusted the temperature or anything like that. Some people are saying that they do have a um, pressure cooker. Oh, yeah. Um, or air fryer. And be interested okay, interesting. to see how an air fryer is used as well. Yeah, we don't have an air fryer in this kitchen, but maybe that would be a good, a good next one, next appliance to buy. I don't even have an air fryer at home. Um, so I'd have to do some research on that, but that's definitely another trendy one that seems to get really good reviews and seems to be able to, you know, like cut out, give you a lot of flavor with not using quite as much fat during the cooking process. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the um, tomato paste. So I just purchased, the most inexpensive way to buy tomato paste is just to buy it like this in the little can. And nine and a half times out of 10, you're not gonna use the whole can in one recipe. So today we're just using, I'm using a spoon to measure this too, because it does not have to be an exact measurement. Um, we're just, and I feel like the spoon is just easier to get into the can to scoop out. So two tablespoons. Um, and then what to do with the rest of this? Very easy. Scoop it out into a plastic Ziploc. Smash it flat. So you're going to have like a thin layer of um, tomato paste. Try to get out as much air as you can, seal it, and then put it in your freezer and date it. Um, and then the next time you need your, the next time you make this recipe and you need a little bit of tomato paste, you, I just, what I just do is I break it off while it's frozen, kind of eyeball it. It does, like I said, it does not have to be exact. And then put it into the pot frozen and it'll, it'll thaw out in like 30 seconds. Um, but that's, I mean, this little can is what, like 99 cents? or um, something like that. So the, the challenge I find, because you can also buy it in a tube, the challenge I find with that is that it's more expensive that way. And if you read the tube, it usually says you need to use it up within a week anyways. So um, for maximum freshness. So I don't know. That's I, a I'm, great tip. I'm I, old school with the, with the can. Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> having to throw away stuff. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah. Or another idea, if you want to make the measurements more exact, 
you can do one tablespoon measures into like an ice cube tray. And then once it freezes, take out the measured one tablespoon little cubes and put it into a freezer bag that way. If you want to get more exact, you don't have, I mean, you don't have to because there are a couple of extra steps involved with that. But if you feel more comfortable having an exact one tablespoon measure, you can do it that way. Okay, so we have put in the turkey, all the spices, we put in the onion and the tomato paste, and now we're gonna add the water. So we have just two cups of water, filtered water, preferably, since we're not gonna drain this water out like you would if you were, if you were cooking pasta. Um, and then we are going to add the dried pasta, 12 ounces, which is this whole box. And okay, so here's the trick. You can use any pasta that you like. You will just adjust the temperature. I mean, sorry, not the temperature, the time. So like, for example, on this box, it says 12 minute cooking time. That's for the stove top. If you wanna cook it in the pressure cooker way in the instant pot, you're gonna cut the time in half. So we only need to cook this under pressure for six minutes. So half of whatever pasta. So if your pasta says 10 minutes, cook it under pressure for five minutes. So you have to do a little math. <laughs> um, but yeah, whatever pasta you like. And, and, and your recipe says short pasta, but honestly, if you wanna do spaghetti and all you have to do to do spaghetti is just to kind of break it, you know, break it in half um, before you put it in just so that it'll fit. Okay, so we're gonna add the pasta in, dump that in, give it a stir. Get it, you know, all mixed around. Make sure if you have any onions or anything that's stuck to the side, I just kind of scrape those down a little bit so they don't get stuck up there. And then you're going to put the tomato sauce on top of this mixture, but you're not, you're going to resist the urge to mix it in. So it's literally kind of like laying um, as a layer on top. So this is 12 ounces. This whole jar is 12 ounces. This is the brand that I picked for our class. Um, I like this brand because it, the ingredients are so good. Um, when reading the ingredients, it's just tomatoes, two different types of tomatoes, olive oil, roasted garlic, carrots, and salt. Love it. Because some of the times, like when you read the, you'd be amazed um, what the ingredients are. It's like soybean oil, which is not a very high quality oil. Um, and, or who knows, whatever other things are in there. So I like this one. It's got simple ingredients. The salt is not too high. Um, and so we're just going to, like, like I said, you do not mix in the sauce. You just pour it in and kind of layer it on top. If you mix it in, there's not enough liquid. It ends up being like the liquid is too thick and you might get a, like an error message on your pot. So that goes in. What I would do in retrospect is use, you know, maybe use some of your water, rinse out this jar a little bit and get all the flavor out of there, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so at this point, you're going to put on the lid. We're gonna cancel out what's happening right now, which is the saute. So hit cancel, because we have to switch cooking functions at this point. We have to turn it to pressure cook. And we are gonna make a custom setting. And we, remember our pasta was 12 minutes. So we're gonna just cook it on high for six minutes and start and that's it. So now, you know, we have basically, we have six minutes at this point, if you're making dinner to, you know, clean up, wash dishes, which we also, we don't even really have that many dishes. We just have our cutting board, our knife, which we only use to cut the onion. Um, and that's really it. So once this is done cooking, after six minutes, we're going to quick release the pressure. So we don't even have to wait for the pressure, pressure to go, go down naturally. Um, and then at that point, we're going to open up the pot. We're going to add some baby kale. Your, spinach, your um, recipe calls for spinach, but we're going to use baby kale. And, you know, if you'd like, after you plate it, you can add some Parmesan cheese. Um, and that's really it. This is super quick. You're getting some you know, you're getting, you're, it's a good opportunity to add some greens, which we all need to eat more of. Um, and 
like a super well-balanced, healthy dish. So that is, and like I said, play around with this. You can, you know, if you want to, like we're using kale today, you could use spinach. You could use a mix of different greens. You could use um, like Swiss chard if you have that. You could, maybe you could do cabbage. Um, so also on the spices, remember you can change up the spices. You can change up the, the meat or, or make it vegetarian. Um, it's really kind of a blank slate. You could do olives in this if you want to. Um, whatever the flavors are that you want to, that you're craving, try to, try to switch it up. Okay, so while that's cooking, we are going to jump over here to the other half of the countertop. We're going to make a salad to go with it. Um, this is a simple recipe combining the flavors of apple, pecans, and arugula, which actually, like, I love arugula as a green for adding any kind of fruit. So, like, think of blueberries, strawberries, um, really good with beets but any fruit, honestly. So today we're gonna to use apples. And I love the way that this recipe recommends having two different flavors of apples. So we're, for our tart apple, uh, we're using a Granny Smith, which is green, which adds a different, you know, a different flavor, but also a different color. And then for our sweeter apple, we're gonna do a, what is this? I think, I think it's a Gala, if I remember correctly. I already took the sticker off. Um, so that's like a sweeter apple, but it gives us another color and then also another flavor. Okay, so first things first, we've got pecans in this recipe and these are just raw pecans. So in a way that you can add more flavor to these pecans is to toast them. So I have just like a dry sheet pan here. We're just gonna dry toast them in the oven. So the oven is at 350. So just sprinkle some, you could do this in the toaster oven too. Sprinkle some pecans out, get them in at one even layer here. Try not to get them all piled up on one another. But so like I said, my oven is already at 350. So I'm just gonna pop these in the oven for about, I don't know, six, seven minutes or so. Your recipe says eight minutes. So um, we'll do that on my watch. So set a timer for eight minutes. Hopefully, there we go. Okay, that's a handy way. I love having that kind of timer. Um, okay, so seven minutes on the, what did I say, eight minutes? Yeah, eight minutes on the pecans. That toasting is just so amazing. That adds so much more flavor. You don't even add anything to them. It's just a dry toast. Um, so just be careful though, because they will burn, like they'll go from toasted to burn in like a minute so just be careful keep an eye on them definitely set a timer because I have can't tell you how many times I've burned nuts <laughs> okay so now we're going to so like I said we have apples we have a lemon style dressing I did bring goat cheese today just it does it's not listed in your recipe but it is an option that goes well for cheese on this um, the other ingredient I have here is a red onion now, red onion is not my husband's favorite. <laughs> he thinks like every time someone has a, something has a red onion in it, whether it's a sandwich, a salad, especially if it's raw, it's very strong, right? And that, that onion flavor may stay with your mouth way longer than you want it to. <laughs> so here's a trick we're going to try today. Take your onion, your red onion. I love the color of it, though. That's the thing. Like it's it's a nice colorful onion and of course all the health benefits of the onion are um, amazing so I'm just going to cut it down the center remove the skin and then we're going to soak it for about just a few minutes in some cold ice water so we're going to after I slice it I've got a bowl of ice water right here so nothing has been added to the water it's, it's just ice water. And that takes out, not all, but a lot, a lot of that bite. It's not going to be so, so heat, overwhelming taste. And your, oh, sorry, your recipe does not have this step in it. Um, 
but this is like a classic thing that restaurants do. So I've just sliced this onion. And I mean, you could, you could slice it smaller if you want to. Um, it's up to you. And now this is just going, and our ice is kind of melted, but that's okay. If you want to just do cold water, that works as well too. So I'm just going to kind of dip that down in there. And you want to let it sit for like maybe 10 minutes if you have, if you have time to do like 10 minutes. There's other things you can do. You know, you can add different flavors to this. You, there's a quick pickle method that requires m measuring out like some salt and sugar and maybe some vinegar. But if you want to go super simple and it's a weeknight kind of thing, just the cold water will do the trick. Okay, so let's work on the apples now. So we have the green Granny Smith, which is our tart apple. For this, I don't, I don't have a core. So I'm just gonna cut around the core with my knife. It's the same, same idea. So that's the core. And then from here, I mean, there's a million different ways you could cut it. I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm just gonna slice it. The same cut that I did, similar cut that I did for the onion. But it's totally up to you. on how you do this. You could even, um, you could even spiralize it and make like apple curls. Okay. You could use a mandolin, make like some um, like thick Julian sticks almost like um, apple sticks. But if you want to just have an easy cleanup and wash one thing, just use your knife. <laughs> okay, so that's the green apple. Now we'll go with the gala. Oh my gosh, the variety of apples that are now available. Have you guys noticed this? <laughs> in the stores, especially in the colder months, the varieties of apples have really evolved over the years. Um, I mean, it's not just Granny Smith and Golden Delicious anymore, or Red Delicious. It's, you know, Pink Lady, Honeycrisp. Um, there's something called Jazz Apple. I mean, I encourage you to try, taste test and try some of those different apples um, because they, vary and they vary in crunch and sweetness and texture and it really is like a new food when you have some of these different varieties okay another thing you don't have to use arugula for this you can you can switch it up definitely use um you know you can use spinach you can use Whatever salad green you like, um, you can also use um, uh, cabbage, like a crunchy style cabbage or kale. Um, you can mix up the greens together, or you could buy that bag. You know, bag salad mixes are very convenient too. Okay, so that's our apples, and we got our red onions. We got our apples. This is the bag de arugula already been washed. Um, this recipe also calls for dried cranberries, totally optional. They do have added, you know, all dried cranberries have, I would say most all, 99% of them have some added sweetener. So if you want to avoid the extra sugar, just you don't even have to add these in there, but they do add a nice sweetness and they do add a nice color. Um, okay, so then next we're going to work on the dressing, although I do smell those pecans. So even though my timer hasn't gone off, I'm going to double check these things and see, show me the timer. See um, how much time we have left. The timer has about one minute, one minute left. So um, I think they can handle that, we'll let them go. All right, so we're gonna make the dressing. This is a super simple dressing. Um, I haven't made a vinaigrette in this class in a while. I feel, my husband used to call me the vinaigrette queen because um, <laughs> I was always teaching people how to make vinaigrettes. 
Um, but I realized I haven't, I haven't done the vinaigrette in a while in this class. So um, you don't really need a recipe for a vinaigrette. We, I mean, we obviously, we have one here today if you want to follow it. But um, in general, you can use any vinegar you have, or like today we're going to use a lemon. So you can use any vinegar. You do not have to use lemon for this. So if you're looking to use some ingredients that you already have in your pantry, just use like a white wine vinegar or even a red wine vinegar, whatever vinegar you have is going to be, is going to be totally fine. Um, <clears throat> so there's two things that you need for a dressing of an acid and an oil. So today we're using olive oil, which is over there on the other half of the table, but, um, and, and salt and pepper. And that's the four things, an acid, an oil, salt and pepper, and that could be your vinaigrette. Today, we're the only other thing we're adding is maple syrup, which is totally optional. Okay, that was the timer. So let me pull these out. Let's turn this off. They smell so good. Okay, they will, so they are now done um, and they will continue to cook if you leave them on the warm pan. So be, keep that in mind. If they're close to getting burned and you don't want them to cook anymore, I would take them off the pan and put them into a bowl or something so that they can cool because they definitely need to cool. Um, I mean, they can be warm when you put them in the salad, but they definitely need to cool a little bit. You don't want them to be like smoking hot when you put them in the salad. I think they're going to be totally fine setting on this pan for a few minutes. So no worries. But if yes, if they were already getting super dark, Go ahead and take them off the pan so they don't they don't burn anymore. Um, okay, so back to the dressing. Let's get these lemons cut up and juiced. Um, for lemons, if you want a time saving tip or just a you know a cost saving tip too, um, is to buy your lemons in bulk and then just juice them all at one time. And then once they're juiced and you have like a big container of juice, pour them into the ice cube tray and make little ice cubes of lemon juice. Um, once they're frozen, you can transfer them to a Ziploc bag. And then when you're ready to use your lemon for like a dressing, or even if you want to add it to your tea or, you know, uh, lemon water, just take out your ice cube and let it thaw. It's not going to take very long. You can thaw it in the microwave for like a few seconds. Or um, if you're making a drink, I mean, you can just add it right into the hot tea or into the lemon water. Um, and just a really convenient, easy way to always have fresh lemon. Um, you know, you're saving money because you're buying in bulk. And I find that I use the lemon juice more often that way. Um, another thing you can do, like if you use, if you drink lemon water a lot, is you could kind of work it into your routine to thaw out like, let's say a half a cup of lemon juice every Monday, put it in the refrigerator, and then you have, you know, fresh lemon juice for your drinks all week. That helps me drink more water. <laughs> okay, so that's our lemon juice. We need about three tablespoons here. So the general measurement, if you're not using a recipe for a vinaigrette, the general measurement is either equal parts acid and oil, which is what we're doing today, or if that is too, if your vinegar is really potent, like a sherry vinegar or something that has like a lot of acid in it, then you're going to increase the oil to like a one to two ratio or even a one to three ratio. I feel like I've tried to find a sherry vinaigrette before, or vinegar, and that was not as easy. It was usually just a, is it the same thing as a white wine, or are they different? It's different. It's a different kind of grape, I guess. Um, so, yeah, there's a thousand different kinds of vinegar. Um, I mean, there's champagne vinegar, which is made, I guess, in a similar, I mean, I'm not a vinegar making I don't know all the ins and outs of making vinegar, but I assume it's similar to like how they make champagne or white wine or red wine or sherry, like the alcoholic version of sherry. Um, so yeah, they are, they're all different. They all have slightly different tastes. Uh, balsamic vinegar is, a, is a, also a nice one to have on hand. Um, and if you really get into making vinaigrettes, you can change it up 
figure out what you like that way just by testing them out. Um, and then you do, it's like so freeing to not need a recipe. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm making this in a bowl today, but if you have like a mason jar with a lid on it, that's what I do at home. I just kind of, um, whenever I run out of dressing, I just mix up um, in a mason jar and just have that on hand and ready to go. And it's literally just oil, vinegar, salt, and pepper. Um, and that way I know that it's not going to go bad within a week. The thing about using lemon juice or garlic or any of those ingredients like fresh herbs or onions that are going to go bad, you need to use the vinaigrette within like five days, use it up. But if you have just vinegar and oil, those are two very shelf stable ingredients. You can keep it around for a while. Um, if you do have a dressing that's going to go bad, I'm going to go back to the freezer again. <laughs> if you've got a big jar of something that you've mixed up and it's it's not going to keep any longer. Just use that ice cube tray again and pour your, you know, your vinaigrette into the ice cube tray to save it for another time. You can just thaw it the same way that you, you would um, the lemon juice, just a couple seconds, or even running it under hot water if it's in a jar, um, will thaw it out. And, you know, you can have a quick dressings that way. It's, it's really good in terms of nutrition, because like when you buy, buy the jar dressings, um, they're usually high in salt and they're usually using like some kind of lower quality oil that doesn't have the health benefits like olive oil does. Um, and so you can choose the oil, use your high quality oil and the flavor is always just, you know, a lot fresher and a lot nicer. So in this bowl, we have the oil and the lemon. And now I'm going to add, I got to get my um, pepper. and my salt, which is also over here. And I'm noticing on the Instant Pot over there, it is still coming up to pressure. So the reason is because this size, there's different sizes in the pressure cooker. Um, I'm sorry, in the Instant Pot. There's like, I think it's six quart and eight quart. And we opted to buy the bigger, for these cooking classes, the eight quart. Um, and I, what, so what I found is that the eight quart, because it's bigger, it has, it takes a little bit more time to come up to pressure. So just something to note, if you are a family of four or, or, you know, a household of one or two, um, and you don't need to, if you, if you, you know, prefer not to have like a ton of leftovers, you can definitely get away with getting the six quart. If you have like a family of four or larger, and you want to consistently have leftovers like if you want to double and triple a recipe you need to have you need to probably purchase the the bigger the larger eight quart so I just put a little bit of salt Ash in here oh. and then the only other ingredient we're going to add is maple syrup which honestly is shelf stable for quite some time so you will have to refrigerate it at this point if you you know if you're just using vinegar and a little bit of maple but Actually, I think Eli was gonna say something Ella did you have something to say yeah that's okay I'm waiting for a you know time when she can uh, pause a little bit I was just going to say I have the eight quad instant pot yes and I I love it I she use it. it for everything I'm a vegetarian as you all know and I cook all my lentils rice um, and uh, even vegetable soups and everything in it and I even make my yogurt in it. Plus, I in Indian crepes, you know, okay. the batter has to rise. I use it for all that. And it is just fabulous. I can't be without it anymore. <laughs> cool. Do you, do you find it comes, it takes a little while to come up to pressure, that eight quart size? Not, not really. I plan because I okay. know I want okay. it to come out. So the once you get used to it, I mean, I, out, I yeah, still so. see it's on like a, like a, it's still. Yeah. I guess of my course point it's a bigger that, size, so it is. Even though we set it for six longer. minutes on pressure, it doesn't start using that timer until it comes up to pressure. So it, there's a lit, like it, you know, there's some time involved with it coming up to pressure, and then once it's at pressure and that little, you know, thing pops up, then it starts the timer for the six minutes. So. And I always okay. wait for That's the steam to release by itself, and Ashley. And then I'm going to grab another bowl. So we can kind of mix it what all was together. that? I didn't hear that. Oh, that's okay. I was just saying I let the steam release by itself. 
So then I don't have to worry about anything, you know. So I just give it enough time okay. ahead. Yeah, so that if you if you're going to let it like that's called like natural release. If you want to let it naturally release, um that's totally fine. It keeps it warm in there um until you're ready to eat too, which is which is nice. Um with this recipe, we want to be careful though because we don't want to overcook the pasta. So you do so you do need to like quick release. Let all that steam out fast so that yeah. it doesn't overcook the pasta. All right, so with this recipe, we're going to just use our um, our whole thing of arugula. It costs for seven ounces. Let's see how much is this. This is five ounces. So one bag is about five ounces. So if you wanted to, I don't know, I think it's flexible. So if you wanted to add maybe some other um, greens in addition to the one bag, that works well. Um, and then, you know, it's like with any salad, you can pre-make it ahead of time. You can, you know, cut up your apples, maybe squeeze a little lemon juice on there so they don't brown. Um, you can pre-make the dressing, obviously. You can have the greens ready to go. You can make your pecans ahead of time. Um, but I would wait to mix it until you're ready to serve. And actually you could do, you know, you could do your onions ahead of time too. But don't mix it until you're ready to eat because otherwise the greens will kind of wilt a little bit. Um, so let me test, let me get a fork and I'm going to test the onion out to see. I don't think it's been quite 10 minutes, but I'm going to test this out and see what it tastes like. If I can get one, it's like fishing here. Okay. It still has that onion flavor, but it didn't hit me until like the very end. So um, yeah, I'm still getting a lot of that onion heat, but it's definitely better. It's definitely better. So we're gonna let that sit there for just a couple more seconds. And I'm hoping that our pot comes up to pressure soon before we, uh, <laughs> before we run out of time here. Let's see. I'm listening in here. I think it's boiling. Okay, well maybe I'll go ahead and, and actually mix the salad. So let's just do the apples. Let's do the dressing, give it a stir. If you do it in the jar, it's kind of nice because then you can just shake it. I'm going to just start with about half and then we'll, we'll check and we'll, we'll see if it needs more. And then let's see, I'm going to use some tongs just to lift the onion out. I'm not going to add this whole onion. I think it'd be way too overpowering to add the whole onion. So yeah, even your recipe says a quarter of an onion. But if you, if you are going to cut it, I would go ahead and cut the whole thing and just, you know, have it ready to go in, in the refrigerator. You can store it in the water if you want. But yeah, I'm just going to do, I mean, really, this is like just beautiful in there, right? So but obviously skip the, you know, skip the, the red onion if you don't like the, the heat of it. It is, a, it is one of the more potent onion, onions out there. You could definitely do shallots. That would be a little less intense. Um, so that is the onion. And then let's do, let's get our pecans over here. The longer those sit there, the more I smell them. They're definitely still cooking, sitting on that pan. They were yeah, just getting more and more fragrant. Yeah. yeah. And they're so nice here. I'm just going to dump, I'm going to just dump this whole thing on there. If you have a toaster oven, it's like a perfect size oven for this. Then you don't have to wait for your, for your oven to preheat. So that is everything except for the cranberries. And then if you're gonna add goat cheese, I would wait until everything is mixed up. That way it doesn't get, it doesn't get um, mashed in with everything. Cause goat cheese is super, it's almost like cream cheese, it's so soft. So I'm just gonna kind of toss it. You guys, this salad is so easy, but how it looks like we 
put a lot of thought and care into it. I mean, this, this is definitely a salad that you could serve for a party or something or a special gathering. It's a $15 restaurant salad right there. Oh, I know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's amazing how much um, you would pay for this in a restaurant. And I love that the dressing was so easy and I'm getting the, the, the arugula all over the countertop. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more dressing, maybe just go for the whole thing. And I need you guys here to eat this. <laughs> if you, if you wanna do a drive-by, I'll uh, get you some, we'll put it in your car. <laughs> um, okay, and then we have the goat cheese. So I'm just gonna use my knife to, oh no, there's an easy way to open it. Nice. So I'm just going to use a fork to, so that, that's like, like I said, go ahead and mix everything up like this. Um, and then do your goat cheese. I mean, you could even do it so you don't have to, you know, add it to the whole thing. You could even plate it first um, like that. Okay. We're going to make it like an entree here because we have the whole plate. Um, and then you can just take your goat cheese. I like to buy it not crumbled. I think it's so much fresher and so much better flavor when it's not crumbled. I mean, look how soft it is. I actually need two forks. So I don't want to use my finger here. Whoops. Fork or a spoon. This one is, um, yeah, super soft. So I'm just going to kind of do this little dollops of this. Gosh, it's really, <laughs> I swear it's not normally this sticky. Um, maybe because it's been out of the refrigerator for a little while. There it goes. So something like that. I mean, a little bit goes a long way, but definitely wait until you plate it or until you're done mixing the dressing to put it on the whole bowl. Something like that. I mean, seriously, how much would you pay for this entree style? 12 bucks? It doesn't even have a pro, I mean, it doesn't have like chicken on it or anything, but you could, I mean, this could be its own thing. You could add like grilled chicken or some kind of, um, you know, some kind of meat or salmon or something like that with it. I just love the way it looks. Okay. So some avocado. Yes. Yeah. Avocado. Yeah. I mean, definitely to avocado would be nice. You could use avocado in places that go cheese. If you're trying to avoid dairy. Um, I mean, I, I definitely think with the, with the protein from the nuts, you get a little bit of fat from the avocado. I think it, you could definitely make that a vegetarian um, filling, you know, definitely filling enough for like a main meal. Okay. Honestly, guys, our pressure cooker is still not at pressure yet. So um, maybe we can use this opportunity to ask questions about the Instant Pot. If anybody has any questions about um, making a, a vinaigrette or this instant pot recipe or any instant pot questions. Yeah, feel free to enter any questions in the chat or unmute yourself. Uh, we were talking earlier, uh, asking the group who all had an instant pot. I think a few people have jumped on since then. So if you want to let us know whether or not you have one already or you're just interested in buying one. I'm just interested to hear what everybody's experience level is with the Instant Pot. And I will say really quickly, we're having issues with this headset and I, can, I can't hear the questions. So Emily is going to listen to the questions and she's going to relay, relay them to me. <laughs> or you can just ask your questions in the chat. Okay. We realized after we planned this that today is Mardi Gras. I don't know if anybody's planning to make anything for Mardi Gras. I think one person earlier said they are making a jambalaya. Uh, but Ashley did say that you could add some extra Cajun spices to one of these dishes, the pasta dish, um, if you wanted to do that. Anybody else cooking anything fun tonight? Is anyone making a king cake or eating a king cake? <laughs> Um, my kids were just, I like to introduce them to um, different cultural uh, traditions around different um, 
holidays. And so today I, I let them watch a video this morning about how to make a king cake. And so it was like all, you know, all the steps involved with it. And it like, it's such a kid friendly recipe um, because you've got the dough and you've got, you know, then you have to shape, shape the dough and roll the dough with the, with the filling. And you've got the little baby that goes into it, <laughs> which is super fun. Um, and then you, what you is know, the, the beating behind the baby? I don't even think, I think I it's just, if you get the, if you get the slice with the baby, then it's good luck. And I think it also, is, it says like, you have to make the king cake next gathering. Like you're the one in charge of making it next time. But also like, it's very good luck, very good fortune. Okay. If, you, if you get, if you get the baby. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, you're rolling it and you're shaping it into this circle, um, like almost like Play-Doh, you know, it's like, it's like a super fun, I will have to, I, I don't know if I've never made a king cake and um, there's definitely a lot of steps involved. Um, but then you've got like the colored sugar that goes on top, um, uh, super festive. I bet it, you know, I bet it, it seemed, it seemed like, I mean, it seemed doable, but lots of steps involved. Has yeah. anyone ever made a king cake? Do you buy dough or I'm guessing you make your own? In this, in this video we watched, they made their own dough. So it's a yeast style um, dough and so there is time involved with letting it rise and all of that. Well, that actually is a perfect segue into our next nutrition seminar, um, which is going to be in celebration of Nutrition Month, month, which is March. Um, so let me share that real quick. Um, and we are going to be having this nutrition seminar in this February. Yes, uh, March 15th is going to be our nutrition seminar, which is celebrate a world of flavors. Um, and again, that's with chef or dietitian Kristen Kubalowski. Um, and she's just going to be going over the different seasonings from around the world, um, how and you, you can incorporate those and the different health benefits as well. So just feel free to join us for that program on March 15th at noon, and you can register at csatlanta.org. All right, guys, so we are pretty much out of time for this class. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop the Instant Pot because it's, we're not, I don't want to wait for this whole we, we don't have time to just like wait for the whole thing. So, so if you ever come across this and you need to just jump ship <laughs> and cancel your recipe, you just hit cancel and the whole thing turns off. And then we're just going to release the pressure that's built up in there. Oh gosh, there's no pressure. Interesting. Okay. So then we're going to open it. Did it not cook? Okay. It's hot. The sauce is on top. And it's the, the pasta is like partially cooked. There's definitely a steam in here, but it's definitely not as hot as I would imagine. I'm going to have to test this again. Well, I mean, actually the pasta is cooked. It's al dente. Everything is hot. It just, it just hasn't. Those flavors are probably just not going to be, can you guys see? Okay, good. Okay. So at this point, you know, if you had more steam, which we do, we have a good bit of steam. So at this point here, let's just test it. I don't know if we have enough steam to cook this, but Let's just handful of the baby kale, or you could use, you know, you could use regular kale and just kind of thinly slice it. I see a little yellow piece there. So I'm going to take that out. So that's a couple handfuls of the fresh greens. Give that a stir. I mean, surprisingly, this is, this is cooked. It just didn't take the whole time. But yeah, interestingly, it is actually cooked in here. So don't be, okay, this is a good um, opportunity to just talk about, like, don't be scared. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't come, I mean, it didn't like really work the way we expected it to work, but it's still cooked. And we still only have to wash one pot. And if you did, if you did let it cook the whole time and, you know, once it came up to pressure, it only cooked for six minutes. Um, the flavors will be deep, you know, well, like if you had let it simmer, if you had let the sauce simmer on your stove for like several hours, like that's kind of like the flavor development you would get with the sauce. Um, and actually our greens wilted just fine. So 
I'm still happy with this. I'm still very happy with this. So just a couple, I'm going to plate it here so you guys can see it. And then this is the point where you can add your, your recipe says fresh lemon. Although that only works if you really like lemon, because we've already added the lemon pepper. So let's see. So that is our pasta. Can you get us over here? Yeah, here we go. So there's the pasta with the salad. And then at this point, you know, just a little sprinkles of fresh Parmesan. If you can buy the Parmesan in, on the rind, that's like a little bit better flavor. It's, it's a little bit more expensive that way, but in the long run, it's not because a little bit of that goes a long way. And another, another one you can store in the freezer. You can literally grate it frozen and it will, it will, you know, come to room temperature as it hits your sauce, your hot sauce. Ashley, I just imagine that your freezer is full of <laughs> <laughs> the odds and ends. <laughs> you I know. Definitely my freezer is more full of those kind of things than like actual like frozen meals, like, you know, box frozen meals that you get from the store. Okay. I want to taste this and just see, I, I just want you guys to know, even though it looks delicious, I just want to see what the flavor is. Okay. It is totally cooked. It is super hot. It's perfect. I mean, it's great. You will get more flavor, you know, like I said, if you're, as if your sauce had simmered on the stove for like hours, if it had actually come up to pressure for six minutes. But the pasta is totally cooked, which is actually super surprising to me. Um, so if you're in the middle of making this and you have like a kid crying and he's like, <laughs> I want to eat now, you can cancel it. <laughs> or if your guests have arrived, and they're standing around and your, your pot hasn't come up. I think it was, in, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say it was in there for, it was in there for 20 minutes, I think, while we made the salad, at least. So that's plenty of time for everything to be cooked through. I think it's just more of that flavor development that you would get. But honestly, the flavor is, is delicious. I think you're going to be really happy with it. And I think if you do end up getting the smaller pot, the six quart, it will come up to pressure faster. So keep that in mind. All right. Well, thank you, Ashley, so much. I hope um, this has got some of you thinking about getting an instant pot and maybe we'll try another recipe in the future if some of you do decide to get that. Um, but just healthy eating with an instant pot and healthy and simple. Yeah, let us know, um, too, if you want to see more instant pot recipes um, or classes using the instant pot. Let us know if that's helpful for you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And remember that next nutrition seminar with flavors of the world will be March 15th at noon and you can register at csdatlanta.org and also find today's recipe on our website as well. All right, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Bye. Ashley. Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. If you're interested in other live or recorded programs, please visit the online program tab of our website, cscatlanta.org. Or follow us on Facebook. We'll be sharing additional information on upcoming programs.